Hello, this is Vic. Welcome to my channel and thank you for viewing my videos today. I'm in the beautiful country of Greece and I'm visiting the very spectacular and very historic island of Rhodes. In this particular documentary we're going to visit the ancient and medieval town of Rhodes, the old town of Rhodes here in this beautiful island. We're going to visit a very particular part of the old town the walls built by the Knights of the Order of St. John the Baptist of Jerusalem. But before we do so, let's learn a few things. So who were these knights of the order of St. John the Baptist of Jerusalem? Well, first of all, they were a Catholic order, which means you had to be Catholic in order to belong to the group. Secondly, they were formed in 1023, and the primary mission was a charity. They had to care for the poor, for the injured, for the homeless, when they were visiting the holy places. But in 1099, the Pope issued a charter to them, and now their purpose became militaristic. They were now a military group, and their mission was to defend the holy places while the pilgrims were visiting. In 1187, when the Islamic armies and the Saladin took over the holy places, they were kicked out of the Middle East, and now they moved to Cyprus. Eventually, in 1309, they came here to Rhodes and they established themselves for 213 years. They stayed here until the beginning of 1523, when the Ottoman Turks took over the old town of Rhodes, actually, when they took over the whole island of Rhodes. Now, between 1309 and 1522, they built a magnificent wall surrounding the old town of Rhodes, and this is the subject of this particular documentary. We're going to visit the wall, we're going to go to so many different places, we're going to learn so much about history, and so much about the architecture of the walls. So let's go for a walk. You will really enjoy this documentary. Let's do it. Now keep in mind that the order of St. John the Baptist was a Catholic order. As a result, many nationalities really belong to the order as knights. So how do you really, how can you defend such a huge place surrounded by four kilometers of a wall if you have so many different nationalities speaking so many different languages? Well, they had devised a very simple method what they did is each nationality owned part of the wall. So you had the German part, the Italian, the English. Now keep in mind this is before Henry VIII. So the English were at the time a Catholic nation. You had Spanish, you had Castilian, and so on. Another point I'd like to make to you as part of the treaty when the Knights departed in 1523 was that all Christians would leave the town. So when the Ottomans entered, there were no Christians left at all. A lot of Greek writers say that the Greeks were ex expelled. That's 
you know, partially accurate. But uh, the element that was expelled out of the town was actually the Christian element. Nobody mentions when the Christians really re-entered the town, but it seems like in the 1830s after the Greeks uh, regained their independence from the Turks. The walls are over four kilometers in length and the size of the land that they enclose, let me see if I can get this right, is 104 acres or just about half a square kilometer or just a little bit over a quarter of a square mile. Now in this area today over 6,000 people live here during the winter and during the summer as well. When the Knights were here, it is quite possible that there were over 50,000 people living in this small area here in the old town of Rhodes. Now a question that you may ask me, and I'm very well prepared to answer it, is the following. Once the walls were completed by the Knights, were they ever really tested in war or siege conditions before 1522, before the Ottoman Turks showed up here? And the answer is an absolute yes. They were tested on several occasions when the Arabs and the Saracens came here to take over the old town of Rhodes. Of course, they were not very successful. The true test came in 1480 when a huge Ottoman army showed up of about 100,000 people and a navy of 170 ships trying to take the old town of Rhodes. The Sultan at the time was Mehmed II. Now, the Turks, as we know, were the very first nation to use artillery in 1453 when they took over Constantinople. And 27 years later, when they came here to take the old town of Rhodes, they had improved on, on the artillery methods. Of course, they had not perfected it, but there was a lot of improvement. But the Knights had predicted the artillery and the damage the artillery could cause, and they had fixed and they had designed the walls in such a way to repel even artillery shots and artillery attacks. So Mehmed II left in 1480 because he could not take the city. The Turks had to wait for another 42 years under Suleiman the Magnificent to take the city in 1522. Now when the Knights were constructing their walls here in Rhodes, they constructed a lot of passageways under the walls for communication purposes. Nobody really knows where those passages are, how many there are, how long they are. They only know of just a few of them. Here's an example of a couple that I discovered and I was able to cross. Just watch.
Now imagine the shape of half a circle. That's exactly the shape of the walls here in the old town of Rhodes. There is a curvature of half of the circle which is facing inland and the straight line of half of the circle that hugs the sea here in Rhodes. Now let's take this point a little further. A few years ago a historian who never visited Rhodes wrote that the ancient city surrounded by the walls was also surrounded by a moat, M-O-A-T. A moat, of course, is a canal. It was a mechanism that the medieval people used to use in order to defend their city. You see, it would be very difficult for an enemy to cross a canal before they attack the main walls that were surrounding and they were defending the city. Now, this is so absolutely inaccurate, and this is why I said this person, the road, and never really visited the old town of Rhodes and never walked on their walls. Now, let's go back to the half a circle. If you go to the top of the circular part of the half the circle, and if you go to the straight line, there's a difference of 20 meters between the two. The straight line that hugs the sea is 20 meters lower than the top of the circle. And of course, it would be impossible to form a moat around it because the water needs a flat area in order to flow. And if you put water 20 meters higher, of course, it would flow all back into the sea. So it, ne it never really made a sense. So there was no moat here. What the knights did, however, around the wall, around half of the circle, they built a huge area extending 20 to 30 meters in width. Now, they did that for two reasons. First of all, they got the rock, the limestone, in order to build the wall. That's the first function. This is why they dug this area around the wall. The second thing, though, they had in mind was to defend the wall. This created a huge gap between the walls and the wall on the other side of about 20 to 30 meters. Now, in order for the enemy to attack the main walls, they had to go down the slope of the wall opposing the walls, and then they had to be in this area, in this gap of 20 to 30 meters. And then they would be very easy prey to the missiles and to the arrows of the people defending the city from their walls. So this is why there's such a huge gap between the two. Just look at the documentary here and you will see exactly what I mean. So there was no moat, but there was an ingenious mechanism that the Nazis used in order to defend the town. At one time, there were 11 magnificent gates around these beautiful, spectacular walls. One gate better and more beautiful than the other. Here's a view of just a couple of them so you can get an idea how magnificent they were when the wall was completed by the knights here in Rhodes. Now remember the gap I discussed with you, the gap has been uh, misunderstood and mistaken as a moat. Well, the knights, once they completed the town, they had to cross this huge gap in order to go to the other parts of, of the town. And as a result, they built some beautiful bridges. Here's a view of a couple of them.
Now, when the Knights started the construction of this immense project, soon after 1309, soon after they moved to Rhodes, they had to borrow the design of the walls from another place. They had to use another prototype and they used the Theodosian walls from Constantinople. Now, the Theodosian walls were built about seven centuries earlier, but they were the most spectacular and the best design they could use. As a matter of fact, when you look at this documentary, you see square uh, towers, tall towers, embedded into the walls that's purely Byzantine in style. Now there used to be a wall surrounding the classic Greek city of Rhodes here, possibly as early as the 7th century before Christ. And certainly there was a wall here in the 4th century before Christ because the Greeks here were able to repel an attack by the Macedonians. The Byzantines took over the city in the 7th century after Christ and they strengthened and enlarged their walls. When the knights came here in 1309. They worked on the walls for 200 years and this is exactly what we see here, what he accomplished 200 years after they took over the city in 1309. When the Turks took over the city in 1523, they really did not do anything to the walls. They were in fantastic shape. All the Turks did is they applied some repairing to the damage they had caused from the bombardment from the six-month siege of 1522. So what we see here in this uh, beautiful city, in this historic city here in Greece, is purely the wall built by the Knights of the Order of St. John of Jerusalem. And as a last point, because of the historical and cultural significance of this wall and also because of the old town here in Rhodes, the whole site has been declared a UNESCO site since 1998. This is Vic, thank you for joining me all the way from the old town of Rhodes. Now it took quite a few hours of research and studying in order to figure out all these different parts of the wall. If you have any questions, any concerns, any suggestions, please send me an email. My email is listed always in the description of every one of my videos. This is Vic, bye bye.